This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 36 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. We would like to thank our sponsors, Kentucky Performance Products. They offer supplements designed to give you the most value for your dollars. Visit them at kppusa.com. This is Chris Stafford in Lexington, Kentucky. And I'm Debbie McDonald in Thousand Oaks, California, and you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show. Well, hi, Debbie. How are you this week? I'm great, and how are you? I'm doing just great. Well, first of all, congratulations with your wonderful success with Adrian, your protege last week in Thermal. Uh, Since we last spoke, you had some great results out there. She did a great job. I was very happy, and actually, I was very happy with all our horses. They did very well. Um, All my riders did well. I was just really, really, you know, one of those proud moments. (laughs) (laughs) So it was just one of those days that, you know, things started to come together, and um, hopefully, you know, you can continue on that path. We all know that horses are horses, and you never know what's going to happen, but you always take those days that seem so good. Well, they do. You've got to take them when they come, don't you? Absolutely. Well, good for you. Well, it promises to be a good winter, and I'm sure you've got more shows over there during, during the winter to keep you busy. Oh, definitely. We're just about ready to really start up in the middle of February, so that'll start a real, you know, it will seems like it's going to go like a whirlwind, I think, after that. Well, yeah, the, there's not only the showing, but, um, of course, you were just announced as the head-to-head up the USEF Developing Dressage Program, which we want to talk about a little bit later on in, in the show, but congratulations on that, Debbie. Thank you. I'm very excited about that. Well, it, it, it's going to keep you busy, that's for sure, and um, we, have a, we have a good show this week, Debbie, as always, um, and we're delighted to know that so many people around the world are listening to the Dressage Radio Show. We, we're picked up over 25 countries now around the world, and with many of the you know, very prominent websites are uh, carrying it as affiliates, and we're delighted to be extending our audience. So welcome to all of you if you're new to the Dressage Radio Show. We try and bring you as much diversity as we can within the sport, and we always love to hear from you. And this week, uh, we've got a a great program, because as I said, we're going to be talking to you a little bit later on, Debbie, about the Developing Dressage Program, but we're also going to be catching up with Elise Carbone. She's a young rider uh, graduate. She actually uh, competed in the 2009 uh, North America Junior Young Rider Championships at the Kentucky Horse Park last year, which is where I actually met her. And uh, she recently took part in the Young Rider Graduate Program. So really looking forward to hearing about that and how important those programs are, Deb, what you're doing and what she did in transitioning people through their young careers. It's so true. I mean, this is definitely a spot that we're, we're not, I think, quite doing as much as we need to do for these young young riders coming up. And I think everybody's aware of it and all the people are getting on board to try to really make these young girls and boys feel like there's a place for them after young riders so we can bring up some new blood in our sport and and continue educating for sure. Well we'll come to all that a little bit later on but we have a few items of news this week not least of all the busy competition weekend that it was in uh, in um, Amsterdam and also on the Gold Coast in, in Florida but We're going to start this week, Debbie, with news that Aachen, the CHIO, of course, that takes place uh, from the 9th to the 18th of July, they're going to be using and testing the new format that's been proposed for Olympic dressage with the aim of making the sport more understandable for spectators and competitors. The trial format, of course, is the brainchild of the FEI Dressage Task Force, which was led by Chairman Frank Kemperman, who's also the Aachen show director. The FEI's General Assembly approved the innovations in Copenhagen at their General Assembly just uh, last November. And Kemperman points out that they want to make the sport more entertaining and more comprehensible. And part of that move is to include detailed proposals regarding the improvement of the judging system. The task force has formulated a concept for a change competition format for Olympic Games. The team competition will now be decided in the Grand Prix Special and the teams will start in reverse order of their Grand Prix results. 
The new judging systems will also be on trial at Arkin, including seven judges instead of five. Judges will be able to give half marks. In the freestyle music to music, test judges will assume different tasks. The one judge is responsible for the rating of the technical performance and another will judge solely the artistic performance. And finally, a supervisory panel where the work of the judges is supervised. And for the Arkin competition, the three plus one system will be applied. That's when a country can bring four riders, but only three of them will officially start for the team. And from now on, there will be no more drop score. So lots of new changes there, Debbie, coming to be tested at Arkin. There really are. I mean, it sounds like it's, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, it sounds like a good compromise between, you know, not having the four riders. Um, hopefully this gives a chance for everybody that, that goes to be able to ride twice, which is is huge. I mean, it's a lot, a long distance to go and, and uh, for only six minutes. So, um that's an interesting concept. And then um, what wasn't real clear to me, Chris, is are they using the Grand Prix as uh, only a determining order of go and then only using the special as the result for the team, or are they combining the two? Do you know that? No, I don't know that, and that would be something we'd like to find out a little bit more about. So if anyone out there knows more um, behind that, that's a very good point, Debbie, and the kind of thing we do need to clarify. You know, as journalists, we get to the competitions, we make sure we've read the rules, and but there is always questions when there's new rules, you know, and we're always asking right. each other, okay, well, which is it? And, of course, it's different for World Cups and for Olympics, and uh, you, you really have to try and keep up with it so if anyone out there has an answer for us we'd love to hear from you uh, but yeah it just was a little bit ambiguous there wasn't it in uh, in in how that's going to the work work out and very interesting that the the special now is going to be more in, going to be influential for the team event yeah it really is um like i said i think it's it's great in so many ways because it does sound like it's going to give the riders a chance to ride twice which I think is is really great. I mean, you know, like I said, going for for six minutes is can be pretty disappointing. So it gives somebody a second chance to also go in the ring. So I think it's a, a wonderful concept. And it definitely, I think everybody knows that, you know, everybody's looking for a way to always better the um, – the, the growing of the sport and um, and this sounds like an, a way of doing so so I I think it's exciting it'll be yeah, a yeah. very exciting concept it, it will well we'll let, stay tuned and uh, um, obviously watch Arkin as it unfolds because that will of course be a gen uh, um, a selection trial for the Germans um, so lots happening this year as we lead up to another championships here at the Kentucky Horse Park for the World Games in September. But uh, as I said, if you have an answer to those questions, you can help Debbie and I out. Um, we'd always uh, love to hear from you. Um, we also want to mention that the uh, National Dressage Championships uh, applications are available. The 2010 Collecting Gates Farm USCF Dressage Festival of Champions will return to Gladstone. Um, the festival will once again feature the National Championships for Grand Prix, Intermediate One, Young Adult Brentina Cup, Young Rider and Junior Divisions in, addi- in addition to the selection trials for the World Equestrian Games. The applications of intent for all those divisions are now available and you can find a link to them on our website. Um, news from North Carolina, uh, Debbie, that the um, CDI rally um, has been, event has been suspended for 2010 due to the resignation of manager Janine Malone there. Um, have you, have you heard about that? For them. Yes, I did, and it's very sad for them to have to lose it, although, um, you know, I think, uh, I think there was talk of somebody trying to come in and take it over, but I think it was such short notice that I don't think they could make it happen. But... Um, I'm sure they'll get it up and running in 11, and I think it'll, it'll you know, be fabulous again. So I, I know how bad it must hurt to lose that. Um, we don't you seem to have that many, so losing one of those is always, you know, something you worry about. Absolutely. But they sh- I should point out that the North Carolina Dressage and Combined Training Association is determined to move forward with plans for next year, as Debbie points out. 
um, with the with, among their own community there and, and under new management. But the Capital Dressage Classic will still be held this year from June 4th to the 6th as a Level 3 competition with USEF developing program qualifiers, but without the CDI three-star portion of the show. So that's the latest from CDI Rally. Stay tuned for that. Of course, we will bring you any updates as we hear them. And uh, the Dressage Foundation has seen the departure of two very key players um, that have really kept that foundation going for many years. Uh, John and Lynn Boomer have announced their departure. After managing the foundation for over a decade, they uh, announced their retirement at the end of the year. John served as president and CEO, while Lynn, of course, was the administrative director for a number of years. And during their time on the ma- as the management team, they raised over $925,000 that was given to wow. dressage riders and groups through funds that uh, John and Lynn helped to establish and develop. Um, John points out that he, though he will be continuing to serve as Secretary of the, of the Board of Directors, um, but they are handing over the reins to Melissa Filippi and Jenny Johnson, so good luck to them. And what a fantastic legacy, Debbie, to, I mean, that's almost a million dollars. Uh. I know, and and really, they worked so hard at this, and um, I just, you know, I can't thank them enough for what they've started here, and and hopefully it's going to continue and grow, and knowing that he's still a part of it in some way is always it's always nice to know too. Well, good good for them, and we wish them well in their retirement. Well, down in Florida, it was a busy weekend, Debbie, at the Gold Coast. Um, we saw Ashley Holtz and Popart win the freestyle on 76.4. Michaela Gunderson and Lena Berg on 71.8 finished in second place. They're from Denmark, followed by Melissa Taylor and Schumacher Solst on 66.55. In the Grand Prix Special, Belinda Trussell and Anton won that with 68.292 followed by Victoria Winter and Proton on 67.250, and they were followed by Todd Fletcherick riding Heather Blitz's former ride Otto on 66.958. And in the Intermediate 1, Christopher Hickey and Cabana Boy, uh, they won that with 70.351, followed by Tooney Page and Ice Cup on 69.035, and George Williams, the new president of the United States Dressage Federation, and Don Bailey, finishing in third place on 68.772. Really busy weekend there for a very popular event in Florida, Debbie. Wow, that's for sure. I saw the the entries for that, and they had like something like 36 in the Grand Prix. I mean, that's that would be a dream for that to happen here on the West Coast. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I bet it was a very exciting weekend for everybody. It was, and that's what impressed me, too, was number, the number of entries that they had down there. Yes. You know, yeah. they get a lot of the Canadians right, uh, down there, too. And, I mean, just the, the more international flavor they have has just got to be exciting. Well, we should point out that the Canadians are using um, a base down there generously uh, offered by Tooney Page to train the Canadian team, headed up, of course, by our own Robert Dover. So they, they're they enjoying the Florida sunshine, and why wouldn't they to be, come out of Canada? Uh, <laughs> right. I agree. <laughs> well, good luck to them as they prepare this year, of course, uh, for their assault on the world uh, equestrian games. But meanwhile, the, the Europeans are doing their own thing over there. It was the seventh round of the World Cup qualifier at Amsterdam this past weekend, and Edward Gall, not surprisingly won a game with touchiness. Uh, Are we going to get used to saying this, Deb? I do, I think so. (laughs) Yeah, He just made a a modest 87% uh, with touchiness there heading up uh, the the freestyle. But the surprise, well, slight surprise, but a terrific second place for Britain's Laura Bechtensheimer with Mr. Horace with 82.30. That, that's a great result for her, isn't it, Oh, Debbie? wow. Yes. I mean, you know, that's a, an exciting young combination coming up, too. I mean, um, it's, a, it's an exciting year, I have to say, with so many new combinations. And, um, you know, it's just these scores are just, you know, so wonderful for our sport. And I believe she broke two British records by securing that second place now and uh, and to to divide the, the Dutch, which she did, and keep the Germans at bay, all credit to Laura. We'll have to get her on the show. 
Yes, definitely. She's a lovely girl. You'll really enjoy her. In third place was Imke Schellick and Bartels and Sunrise. Of course, they have already won a couple of World Cup qualifiers. Um, they finished on 82.05. And in fourth place, Anki van Grunsven and Painted Black with 81.20. Interesting that she's getting relegated to fourth place at a World Cup qualifier. How things, times are changing, uh, Deb. They are, you know, and um, it, it, in some ways it's very good for the sport to see this kind of uh, little mix-up occasionally. I think it's it's nice to see that uh, there's hope for other people out there. So I think it's very healthy. Very healthy to have good competition. And uh, I'm pleased to see that Isabel Verse and Varum Nick FRH, he finished on 79.8. Of course, she's making her comeback after having her baby. Uh, yes. So lovely to see her back in competition. Um, and no doubt with Sachmo as well. I think that both of them are, are you know, full, full steam ahead. So, uh, you know, really, it, the, 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 right now, the Dutch uh, are what it's all about. They, you know, they, they head up the, the standings after seven rounds of the World Cup uh, qualifiers, Deb, uh, Edward and Imke, currently on 55, followed by Jeanette Hazen on 48, and then Anki on 47. So um, Dutch there taking the first four placings in the World Cup standings as they... As the tour moves on to Neumünster in Germany uh, from February 20th to 20, 20, sorry 20th to 21st, and then Gothenburg in Sweden from the 26th to the 27th, and uh, there are just two more qualifiers left for them there in Western Europe before the final in Hertogenbosch in the Netherlands from March 25th to the 27th. So uh, everything to play for for the Germans certainly if they're going to get uh, their rankings up. Um, and make their way to Hertogenbosch uh, in a couple of months' time. It's always tough competition, isn't it, in Western Europe for them? Oh, definitely. It, it truly is. And um, and uh, the Dutch are so proving to be strong right now, it's uh, making it even dip- more difficult for them. So, um, yeah, like I said, an interesting year in, in every aspect. Well, we'll be watching that closely as they make their way to, to the Netherlands for that World Cup Finals. Um, But before we go any further, that's the end of the news, and we're going to be taking a short commercial break before we uh, listen to our first guest this week, Elise Carbone. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Over-supplementation can be a problem, and not every horse needs a supplement. But when they do, you can count on Kentucky Performance Products to provide scientifically formulated, research-proven products that target specific challenges facing your dressage horses. Developed to complement, not compete with a balanced diet, KPP supplements will enhance the well-being of your horse. Kentucky Performance Products, helping you keep your horses healthy, sound, and competitive. You know, dressage horses sweat. As they sweat, horses lose water and vital electrolytes. Summer Games Plus Electrolyte Paste mimics the composition of equine sweat, supplying your horse with the exact amounts of electrolytes he needs. But what makes Summer Games Plus really unique is that it also contains Nalox antacid. Nalox protects your horse's stomach from the negative effects of stress. This extra protection is especially important for horses exposed to stressful situations such as competition, transportation, and unfamiliar stabling. Summer Games Plus is packaged in an easy-to-use syringe, making administration fast and accurate, especially at shows. So when your horse is on the go, keep him at the top of his game with Dual Action Summer Games Plus Electrolyte Paste. Brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products, helping you keep your horses healthy, sound, and competitive. Visit them at kppusa.com. That's kppusa.com. Well, we're back now, and we're going to talk to Elise Carbone, um, the young rider who, who uh, she was part of the Young Rider program for the last time at, uh, in uh, Kentucky last year, a graduate of that, and uh, she has spent some time in Europe uh, attending the Young Rider graduate program, which, as we mentioned, is a really important uh, part of the Young Rider's development. And she's currently studying in San Diego, where she's uh, at college, studying two degrees, so uh, we thought it'd be fun to catch up with uh, Elise and see uh, uh, how the, the season's unfolding for her, what she's been up to, and, and also to learn about this Young Rider graduate program, Deb, um, because I thought this would be a nice partner to hearing from you later about the Developing Dressage program. Yes, she's a, she's a wonderful young lady with 
so much ambition. It, it was just great, to, great fun to listen to her and talk to her. Well, Deb, I'm looking forward to hearing from Elise and learning about uh, this Young Rider program that she obviously uh, took part in and enjoyed uh, this past uh, few weeks. So let's get uh, Elise on the phone. Elise, hello, and welcome back to the show. Hi. Nice to have you back on again. And it's been, what, a few months since the Young Rider, since we were in Kentucky for that, and uh, with your Dutch Warmblood gelding Navarro. Um, and I know that was your last year in Young Rider. So tell us what you've been doing since then. Yeah, unfortunately it was my last year, but it was a it was a great last year, although I am sad to leave the Young Rider program because it was so beneficial um, in my riding and growing up in the dressage community. But um, I am still going to school currently and working on my degree in communications and criminal justice down here in San Diego. But um, oh. I'm also <laughs> furthering... Um, my riding career down here in San Diego, and um, I just took part last week in the Young Rider Graduate Program, which is was just an amazing experience. Well, that you've got a lot going on right now. Then I'm, I'm interested. That that sounds a pretty powerful um, course, doesn't it, Deb? You know, but combining communications and criminal justice, we'll have to watch out, huh? I know that's for sure. We need some more good kids like her out there. <laughs> I, I can just imagine you know, how this career is shaping up now, Elise. You know, communications, uh, criminal justice, and dressage. How yeah, you could combine all those skills? <laughs> you know, I figure I'll just throw them all together somehow. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a really heavy duty program you're doing. So, how much uh, time do you have for your dressage now? I am still riding five to six days a week, so I'm still training full time and uh, with Bettina Loy, and she's just been so great in helping me really develop Navarro's strengths at, at the FEI levels because he is a difficult horse. He's definitely not, not easy to work with or get along with, and she's doing an amazing job and being really patient, and he's really flourishing, and I'm, I'm so excited to um, show him this summer, and I'm actually going to start riding horses for her a couple days a week, too, um, you know, just to keep on top of my riding and to continue learning, and so I'm really excited about that. So I'm actually riding more in the mornings, and then I'm taking afternoon classes, so that's how I managed to balance it. <laughs> well, good well. for you, and then you've fitted in this Young Rider graduate program, too, in Florida. Tell us about that and what, what that experience was like, Elise. The Young Rider Graduate Program was so helpful because the transition kind of from Young Rider to, you know, kind of getting out there into the more professional world, it's kind of scary because, you know, up until, you know, there wasn't really anything until the Brentina Cup, you know, is now developed, which is a great program to help us kind of move on from Young Riders. Um, but otherwise, in the more professional side of it, uh, not just the riding <laughs> side of it, it can be really scary because you don't really know where to go. Um, so the Young Rider Graduate Program was really helpful. It was three days jam-packed of amazing guest speakers, and we talked about everything from sponsorship and judging, and George Williams came in and talked to us about USDF and um, the Dressage Foundation, and there was just so much information. It was really helpful. Well, Debbie, that is, you it is a wonderful program, I have to say. I, you know, I, I only can hope that more people start to, you know, participate in those because it is scary. I know for these young riders to to go from where they're they're fe feeling very involved and a place for them to be, and then all of a sudden it's like the ball drops and they go, okay, well now what do I do? And that's where we lose a lot of our young riders because they just really feel like there's no place for them. They really don't feel able to jump right in with the professionals, and there really isn't a place for them. And so I, I feel that's been a real big hole for our system is that we don't provide something for them after that. Well, Deb, I was just about to say, Deb, I mean, you can relate to that because you have a young rider, 25-year-old Adrian Lyon, who is under your wing and supervision, so you understand what it is, what it means for these young riders as they come out of that program, and then suddenly, then what do they do? Yeah, it's, it's very true. Um, like I said, it's, 
it's um, the the graduate program is a great place for them to get the information what is out there and available and and for them to pick brains on on the people that are there to help them. So tell us, Elise, how how you got involved with that program. How how do you find out about it, and how do you become a part of it? Um, It is through the USDF, but um, the funding support comes mainly from the Dressage Foundation, and um, you apply for it. So I actually um, had to apply for it back in November, and then I found out in December that I had gotten in. But um, the application process is pretty intense. it's not just a couple questions. You had to, I think my, I ended up writing like a four page paper because um, they really kind of want to pick your brain and, and know what your future goals are and, you know, if this program would benefit from you because it was so much information and it was so helpful that all these people donated their time. And I think that, you know, USDF really wants the young writers that go to this to, to take advantage of it because it is such a helpful tool for us but um so you can go online go on usdf and apply for it and right now i believe they're only doing it every other year um due to funding but i am not exactly positive on that so don't quote me on that but um i would suggest for anyone and they we had you know 20 to 28 to take advantage of the program because it was extremely helpful and insightful, and everyone was so nice to talk to us. So, so you get some help with, with funding to get you to Florida for that program, do you, Elise? Yeah. We only had to pay for our plane tickets, and um, if we stayed any extra nights, we had to, to pay for our hotel room. But um, for the duration of the actual program, they um, they pay for our meals and our hotel for two nights, and um, so that was really helpful. And then also this year, they um, down in Florida, the trainers conference was taking place directly after the graduate program with Hank Van Bergen. So he was one of our speakers, but then having them directly one after the other was really helpful because... I had to pay for my plane to get down to Florida, but not only did I get to go to the Young Writer Graduate Program, I got to attend the Trainers Conference, and we also received a discount um, thanks to the Graduate Program to attend the Trainers Conference as well. Well, wow. wow, that's a great opportunity, really great opportunity. And, and how many were you on, were on, on the program, Elise? Um, you know, I think there was about 20 of us, and... You know, it was in Florida this year, but it was me and two other girls were the only people from the West Coast. Otherwise, it was all East Coast people, you know, Florida, New York, Illinois. And I kind of, I was kind of like, you know, I I get that it was a long way to travel and and people are busy, especially for us with with the time change. I kind of was felt a little bit out of it the whole time I was there. I don't ever think I even really got on East Coast time, but... Even if it is in Florida, like the young writers from from the West Coast really need to take advantage of this program as well because it it was worth worth the the flight and the plane ticket. So, do they expect you to to write up a, a report or review of of the program? Are you, what what are, you, what are the expectations from the Dressage Foundation once you've been on that program, Elise? You know they don't really have I would say expectations we 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 sent thank you card you know we were we sent thank you cards and um and more than anything I I didn't know a lot about the dressage foundation or how it works so we actually someone did talk to us a little bit about that and and I think they want us to give back in ways we can and also to take advantage of their other funding that they have for us because they really are trying to help us <laughs> So what were your biggest takeaways from that uh, course? Um, You know, there were so many, but one of the biggest things I think that was stressed from every single person that spoke to us was to never stop learning. And that that is such a critical piece of the puzzle that sometimes, you know, when you get into the professional world and you're a professional yourself and you're a trainer that, that people forget, but 
they, I mean, again and again, we heard it through the whole entire, entire program that it was just never stop learning, never stop learning. You know, you're never too good. Always have eyes on the ground. It is, it is one of the most helpful things and tools in your writing. And you can never, you know, never forget it because you never know it all, especially in this sport. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Debbie, you must see so many young riders at, at, at that stage of their career as Elise is in. And, and this program, of course, is just one that they can get involved with. Um, what, what, what would you advise somebody like Elise to do from, from here on? Well, I think, you know, she basically said it. I mean, they do ask a lot of these uh, young riders that want to attend the graduate program. And the reason is that... Um, we, we really want to look for the people that are interested in staying in the industry. There's a lot of young writers that do just young writers, and then they're, they go on with their careers and their lives. And, and, I mean, that's wonderful and it's great, but it doesn't help grow our industry. And so the reason behind all that is for the, for the you know, the information to find out that we have people and young Riders that are interested in continuing on and becoming either professionals or or whatever in that in the industry, and so it is important for us to know that so we can direct them and we can try to raise the funds to help um, get them educated as much as possible. And it, and the funding is difficult. I mean, it's difficult for everyone in every aspect, and and uh, the fact that that she said that there was possibly twenty is pretty exciting to think that there was 20. <laughs> yes. So, um, you know, I just think um, it, people that are interested in continuing on, they need to search USDF and people like, and, and, and uh, corporations like that that are offering these kind of programs and definitely apply and, um, and like she said, continue the education. Well, we heard just last week from um, from Cassie Bartow, the young rider, and her owner, G- Gina France, and how important it is to invest in young people. And and as you said, you know, finding those that are really committed to a career in, in, in dressage and, and making sure that they know the next rung of the ladder, so to speak. Absolutely. Um, you know, like I said, it's uh, we have a... A very, very, very large country, but our our base of of dressage riders is quite small in comparison. So, you know, we really need to try to reach out and find these people that want to continue, and we do need to start bringing in new blood. Absolutely. Well, what next for you, Elise, apart from studying um, the law and the communications? What's your plans uh, with dressage this year? Um, well, last or this last summer, my horse was still pretty green in the young rider stuff. So I've, I mean, I've had a really good last couple months strengthening the FBI, schooling the Grand Prix. Um, I had an opportunity to clinic with Sue Blinks, which was unbelievably helpful. Um, so I am going to show the Pre St. George and the I won this winter and summer. And um, probably next year as well. And then um, I'm, I would love to do the Brentina Cup on him, you know, in the next in the next couple of years, year or two. So, well, that's fun. that's very exciting. I'm sure you'd love love to hear that, don't you, Debbie? I do. I definitely do. It's been it's been really a, a great pleasure to watch the the kids coming up through the Brentina Cup and seeing them be able to, you know, feel like they've got a place to to develop the Grand Prix skills and um, even some of the horses that might not be, you know, international horses, still them being able to train a horse to do the movements and have a place to show them. And it just, it's been, it's been very rewarding, I have to say. Well, at least, you know, apart from, I mean, obviously you've got a very busy schedule and, and comp- competing and, and taking time with your horse it probably takes up all your spare time. Do you have any time at all to actually just go to dressage competitions and watch other riders and watch other levels of competition? Yeah, um, actually, I am, I think it's like the second second weekend of February, I believe, is um, one of the, I think it's the first CDI, yeah, in Thermal. 
So it's a leg qualifier, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive over the mountains and go over there and um, go watch. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. I know Adrian's competing over there, Debbie, so yes. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be over there as well. Um, yes, I will. So um, I'm really excited about that. And then the Dressage Affair is another leg qualifier as it's uh, in Del Mar, so right, right at my back door, so that's great, um, in March, so... Um, I'm riding in it, but I'm also, you know, I'm sure I'll be there all day watching because there's going to be so many exciting rides, and I do. I still get just as much from from watching. Like, I could, I love being at the horse shows all day. (laughs) (laughs) That's a great way to spend time. Do you think you'll find your way over to Kentucky for the World Equestrian Games? You know, I wish, and we actually looked when we were in Kentucky, um, for young riders, but um, I just don't think it's in the budget, unfortunately. <laughs> um, it's pretty pricey, with school, I'm sure. Yes. It is. It's really pricey, and we tried to get a hotel room kind of when we were over there and explore it, but um, it was just it was way too expensive. So, um, unfortunately not, but um, I will just have to stay up to date, I guess, online. I wish I was going, though. <laughs> well, we'll try and keep you informed on the Dressage Radio Show because we'll rep- be reporting from there, of course. And uh, and while you're in Thermal, Thermal, be sure to find Debbie and say hello to her, won't you? Yes, I will. Yes. Um, I actually talked to, talked to Adrian because we're, we're both kind of from the same area. And so congratulations, by the way, on her success this last weekend. And oh, um, I will you. definitely... Yeah, that's really exciting, and I, I mean, she's such an inspiration for people like me that are kind of making that transition, you know, you you work hard, and it, it'll pay off, so um, I will definitely have to come find you guys and, and say hi, and good luck. <laughs> yes, definitely stop by. Wonderful. Well, thank you for stopping by with us here, here this week on the show, Elise, and nice to catch up with you and, and hear what your plans are. All the best of luck for the season. Maybe you'll come back at the end of the season and tell us how it all went. I would love to. All right, terrific. Good thank luck. you so much. Take thank care. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, great to, to hear about that, Deb. And, you know, that segues very nicely into what you've been doing um, or and, and are going to be doing, heading up the USCF Developing Dressage Program. So uh, uh, before we get to that, I just want to take a short commercial break. And, uh, uh, and when we come back, we'll hear exactly what that involves. So stay tuned. Glenn the Geek here, and we get many emails every week from people who really like the shows, and they ask how they can help support the Horse Radio Network. Well, you already do that by listening to the shows and by buying from all of our fantastic sponsors. And now you can add to that by supporting us directly and very easily. The next time you need something from Amazon, just go to any of our websites and click on the Amazon banner in the middle of the page. Then go on and buy your Amazon items. It won't cost you a penny more, just an extra click. But Amazon gives us a little bit back just because you clicked on the banner. Tell your family and friends to do the same thing. Every little bit helps us to keep giving you the quality equestrian programming that you have come to love. Thanks for listening. Well, Deb, you were just announced this last week as heading up the USCF Developing Dressage Program. Um, so we're, we're going to take this opportunity to find out more about that. What it involves for you, and uh, not in terms of time, but what that program is all about. Well, basically, Chris, what it is, is it's trying to, um, you know, help the combinations, the young riders, the some of the developing horses, and, um, you know, the, the pre-St. George horses to... Uh, just continue on with um, trying to improve the the sport and to be very honest um, it looks like uh, the Pan American Games are going to be a a very important vital role for us coming up um, to maybe secure a spot at the Olympic Games so we really do need to think about um, putting some effort and time into finding these right combinations and putting together a strong team for that. And also just to help uh, support the team in, in, like I said, developing combinations coming up through the ranks. So do you kind of go around the country scouting these young people or do they have to apply to be a part of the program? How does it actually work, Deb? 
Well, right now uh, we're still going on a, a, a list, and there is becoming a, an invited list. And the way somebody can probably get on that invited list is to submit maybe a video and, and some of your um, uh, past you know, experiences and, and results to USEF and um, uh, but right now it's more that you know these developing lists are, are riders that have gone on and um, competed and had re- good results or young riders the same thing strong results and um, uh, young horses as well in the young horse championships so uh, we are trying to always find a way to bring in people that might not have the opportunity or are in between an area where they really haven't had a chance to compete but do have a very strong combination coming up. And that is um, is part of our, our situation here right now is trying to develop a way to get more involved and not just work only off of the list. But, you know, things like this takes – it, I mean, it takes a few years to get something like this off the ground. It's not like we're going to see instant results in the first year. It, it's, it's a young program, and, you know, right now um, I have six clinics planned throughout the country, but, um, again, that eventually in the long term will have to be more than that, I'm assuming. But for, for now, this is where we start and see where we can take it from there. And those clinics you mentioned, uh, they begin just next month in California. You have two in California, right, in May, in, in, sorry, in February and June. Yeah. Uh, one in, in Florida in March and then two in New Jersey in June and July. Correct. But you, men- you mentioned another one. You said you had six. Well, I had one that was already here at uh, in California a okay. month ago. Of but course. But that was before it was publicly released. So, oh, of course. Okay. Um, so I do, I will have completed six by the end of the year for sure fantastic and so that's in quite a bit of time investment but as you said the program it, it, this is a long-term investment isn't it um, you're not going to look for immediate results this year or next year this is this is investing in, a, in our future right absolutely I mean you know like I said we you know we do need to start getting a program where um, we can start using our own people we're trying to get Gunter and Stefan involved in helping out in the develop in the developing program, doing clinics too. Um, so I mean, it's just it's trying to get a group effort from from everyone and try to really uh, develop our education here and bring along some new young blood, which is so greatly needed. It is it is needed, and and it's a wonderful. Um step up the ladder from what we heard about with Elise, the the, um, y- uh, the Young Rider Graduate Program. Um, so for, for people to know about this is really important, that there, there, there is a structure for young people. Um, they don't need to be lost on their, on their, in their career to know what to do next because there, there are resources there, as we heard earlier, almost a million dollars being spent from the um, Dressage Foundation on these programs. Correct. Um, yeah. and, and, and others. So there is a structure there, and like any big plan, it takes a lot of you know, strategic planning and, and a lot of resources. It does, and I think, you know, uh, there's so many people on board now that, that really want to do this and get this done correctly, and, um, you know, I'm just excited to be a part of that and uh, look forward to trying to help better educate and bring along some young combinations well very exciting well we'll be following you through the year deb and you'll have to keep us updated with how that's unfolding and you know with all the talent spotting maybe we should have some of these people on the on the show uh, to hear firsthand what it's like to go through this dressage program that's a very good idea i think it would be really interesting for our listeners to to do that i think that's a great idea chris well, we'll do that. Well, thanks, Deb. Good luck with that on your travel. It's going to be a busy year for you. Yeah. Um, so while you're here, we're going to see what uh, what you've got in store for us this week with your tip of the week. Well, Chris, you know, I, I go around to a lot of these shows and watch ride after ride. And I have to say, I think a lot of people really throw away a lot of points in the show ring when they just don't utilize every 
every section of their corners. And I, and it sounds like it's kind of, oh, not such a big deal. But I have to tell you, I, I always tell my riders, your, your corners become your friends. In other words, that's where you learn to take a breath, set up for the next movement, get your horses straight and balanced, you know, um, and you'll soon find that when you do that, it gives you a moment to kind of think about you have a little more time in there than you thought you did. I know a lot of times when some of my riders come out and, and amateurs alike, um, and they you, you try to ask them a few questions, and, oh, my gosh, I don't know, that went so fast, I don't remember, or whatever. And, and I really, really, really try to emphasize that, that they do utilize every section of that corner, learn to ride your horses into the corner. And the one thing, too, is if you overbend your horses in the corner, when you come out of that corner, they're so out of balance. They're leaning into the, to that outside shoulder, and you come out of a corner and you're setting up for either a pirouette or changes or even an extended canter. You want them at the most balanced position you can possibly have them. So you really need to take those corners a little seriously and uh, – I think you'll find that you have a little bit more time in there and you can really help your horses set up for that next movement coming up. Well, great. Thanks, Deb. I mean, that takes me back to my youth and I, I used to be shouted at when I was in my teens, you know, ride your corners, <laughs> get in those corners, you know, don't exactly. cut them off. You know? it take yep. your time with them too, you know, yep. just take your time. And I'm sure, you know, this is something we can talk about in the, at an, on another show, Deb. You know, our people, they do go in there. If they're not doing it regularly, they maybe hold their breath for five or six minutes, you know, and they come out and it was just a whirlwind to them. <laughs> That's so true. I know. And uh, those, are, those are the places that you can take a breath. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just take advantage of those corners. <laughs> yes. Well, maybe that's a good little tip as well, you know, when you get to a corner, breathe. Take a breath. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a great tip. All right. Well, thanks so much for that, Deb. Um, well, that just about wraps it up for this week. Um, don't forget you can uh, visit to our website, dressageradio.com, where you'll catch all our show notes and links to all the news items that we've mentioned during the show. And don't forget to visit our fan page on Facebook. I'm I'm getting lots of comments on Facebook. And not least of all, fan mail for you, Miss Debbie McDonald. Well, thank you, everybody. I'm so excited that that you enjoy having me. (laughs) It's great. And we love to hear from you. So continue to leave those comments on Facebook or send me an email at chris at horseradionetwork.com. And I'll make sure Debbie gets those emails. Uh, Don't forget that our official social network here of the Horse Radio Network is equestrianlife.com. Go along and and join up equestrianlife.com and uh, set up a profile there and talk to like-minded people in the dressage world. And you can also follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio, and you can follow me on Twitter. I often tweet at Chris E. Stafford. Our voicemail, of course, is 270-803-0025, where you can leave us a message. And we also want to thank our sponsors, of course, who make this show possible. Well, Debbie, thanks so much again for for joining us. Uh, You are a very popular co-host here on the Dressage Radio Show, as uh, as we see with all the fan mail that comes in for you. So uh, keep that coming. Keep keep coming back, won't you, Deb? I absolutely will. And thanks, everybody, for listening, and have a safe ride. (laughs) 